Hey guys, so one, thanks so much for tuning in podcast. Two, um, sorry that I had it pointed at a window and I was kind of in the dark because my exposure was terrible. But, um, you know, enjoy. Uh, we spoke with Jonathan Bell. He's awesome. Um, so I'll do better next time, guys. I'm sorry. Hey, this is Rebecca Lee Perry. I'm on uh, Human Coffee. I am so excited. I'm talking to Mr. Jonathan Bell. We've been trying to get this done for, it's been almost a month, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and we've just been so busy, but I'm so happy to have you on the show. Thank you for taking time out of your really busy day to, uh, to talk to me. So, Well, thank you for having me on. Yeah, so before we get started, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we can, I have tons of questions, so. Well, my name is Jonathan, like you said. Uh, I dress up as Superman, but like the whole gist of everything, I dress up as Superman, going around, taking photos, um, pretty much just trying to figure out how to make a creative career for myself, and two, um, trying to spread, you know, hope. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, I know, because that's actually how I found you was dressed as Superman on TikTok. And so uh, I was just like, this is so amazing. Because, you know, <laughs> growing up, like, there was nobody that did that that looked like us. So I was just like, dang, this is awesome. Um, do you feel like, because I, I noticed on TikTok, and I'm going to jump all over because I have so many questions. But do you, I know on TikTok you dress up as Superman, you dress up as Doctor Strange, um, Green Lantern. I'm not as versed in comic books as you are. So I'm going to, Green Lantern, who's purple, I don't know the name. Of him. Oh, it's Sinestro. <laughs> Sinestro, yes. Um, yeah. my sisters are actually they love you, and they're like, "Can we be in the in the thing?" I was like, "No, we, I've, <laughs> I've got to be professional and talk to Mr. Bell separately." <laughs> but um, but yeah, is there one particular person other than Superman that you feel like you enjoy dressing up as other than him? Uh, pretty much all the other characters that I've done so far. Oh. <laughs> so it's all it's all kind of. Um, I really don't like dressing up as people that I don't like, even though I might look at like them, you know, like a lot of people mm -hmm. like, Oh, you should dress up as like Killmonger. Or you should do static shock. I don't really like those characters. So mm -hmm. I don't really, you know, I know I do cosplay, but it's not like I have to try to do only accurate type stuff for my physique or my face or my build. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like in that aspect, I just only do the things that I like. Like for instance, Dr. Strange, there is like, a person called Brother Voodoo, mm -hmm. um, who isn't Doctor Strange, but he's like a kind of like a sorcerer with like voodoo and stuff. But he, if you like type him into Google, he kind of looks like me. He's got dreads and everything. So people are like, "Oh, you should do that." I'm like, "Well, I don't like that character." So I like Doctor yeah. <laughs> I do like Doctor Strange. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I hate hearing that, but um, <laughs> but so what makes you? what made you choose like Superman? Like, what is the reason? Like you said, I, and I don't know if we talked before or after I started recording, you said that you like to spread hope. And I feel like Superman, like a Superman is actually my favorite uh, superhero. I'm not a big comic book person. Um, but I, Superman was like, you know, the top for me. So what is it that made you like really go after this particular character as opposed to not just people that you look like, but um, other people as well. Because there are a lot of other characters that do uh, have hope as their like basis of who they are. Right. The Superman has always been like my my favorite superhero. So even since I was like a, a child and growing up, like watching um, the Dean Kane show and the animated adventures. So he has always been like um, my favorite one. I like flight and everything too. So, but besides that, I grew up in the christian household so associating like you know the golden rule with superman or like wanting to be the best version of yourself mm -hmm. that's something that related to me with superman even though people say that you know he's like a dork and he's just like too goody and two shoes and stuff but yeah. for me it's always like wanting to treat other people pretty much how you want to be treated you know so that that aspect always stuck and once I only, I, the pretty reason why I started doing the photographs and everything is because that Man of Steel movie came out. Up until then, all the Superman costumes I didn't like because I don't really care for the red underwear look at all. <laughs> and because of the photography and stuff that I do, I wanted something to look more 
like have a sense of more like realism to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when that movie came out and that, and that costume that he has, I'm like, well, that actually doesn't look like a costume. It looks like a real like suit, you know? So I was like, that's something that I could use to incorporate um, in the type of photos that I want to do that won't look like cheesy or whatever. So that's how that whole thing started. Are you, um, cause I, I liked the Superman that, I guess he's not coming back. I don't know. But the current Superman that is, that is, I guess, going into the next series that's coming out uh, was Zack Snyder that directed um, uh, Batman vs. Superman or part of it anyways. Um, do you think that eventually we will get to a point where we'll have a super... Because the Superman has changed so... And I'm just talking about movies right now. Changed from, you know, way back when to now. Like how cool he is like he still stands for the same things but like he's become cool and um do you think that that will change as far as like who's going to play superman if you know what i mean like what do you think um honestly i don't know i do know that the person that is currently writing superman is leaving and i think like bendis he uh he's only been writing him for going on three years now i think Mm -hmm. two or three years and now he's quitting that so they're gonna have a whole new writer for that and as far as like another actor i don't know i think they really don't know how to get it right and so since people were so clingy on to um you know the man is still actor that that played him they just you know want him because they just like how he looks for him and and some people just like you know chris and release but for me it's I mean, honestly, I really could give a crap who's plays Superman, honestly, <laughs> because like to me, it's more of it's more of what the character means to me than mm-hmm. opposed to like, like I've actually never seen the Christopher Reeves movie all the way through, like not even all of them. Same. I haven't even seen like one through yeah. four. Yeah. And I don't really I mean, should I maybe? Yeah, probably. But I do read a lot of the comics and stuff. But as far as that movie goes, that wasn't a movie that I saw that was like, oh, now I like Superman. Mm -hmm. And you know how there are fans that they only like Superman for Christopher Reeve. Like, that's the only person that could be Superman to them. And then you have like, oh, well, Dean Cain's my Superman. Then you have like, oh, Henry Cavill's my Superman. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like, I just like, you know. (laughs) 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 So I would be like, what do you think? And I'm like, you know, like, yes, he does play a good Superman and, you know, there are a lot of different actors that did good jobs, but at the end of the day, like there's always going to be, because this is a timeless character, right? So there's right. always going to be somebody new that plays them. So I just don't want to get a, too attached to a particular thing. Cause it's always going to change, like, you know, all the time, do, but the morals you, and everything I, I would hope don't. <laughs> right. And do you, cause you said earlier that you think that the character in the movies don't necessarily follow the characters in the comic books do you consider yourself more of a comic book head than a movie person when it comes to superman uh probably yeah like i didn't like batman versus superman and i really didn't like justice league at all like so those, <laughs> those were the, those, yeah. those, i mean like i i could understand what they were doing with it but as far as like being like a movie person i i like movies i like film cinema stuff so like those to me just weren't good movies as a whole you know mm-hmm. was it exciting to see superman on a big screen you know like a lot of people didn't like man of scale i like i love that movie me too. Because it was like yeah. his whole you know yeah his whole new origin thing but mm-hmm. everything after that was like okay well this is kind of he's very you know. shallow <laughs> yeah, his character was not well developed <laughs> later on i don't really understand right. it, but yeah i was so excited because like for me that uh superman was i'm very similar to you is like i love what he stands for but i felt like it wasn't really shown in the movies up till man of steel and a lot right. of people apparently and this is something that someone has told me that they're just they're huge comic book heads are just like man of steel is what didn't doesn't go by what's going on in the comic books it's not really what he is but i just what i loved about him in that particular movie was that his character development was shown from the beginning to the end and you understood where he came from. right i mean it, it like really made him human yes you know i like made him kind of relatable and then like you know the next movies it's like it was just the whole story shifted onto something else so yeah. you know it, it didn't and people are still to this day like when are we going to get man still too like who knows if that's ever going to happen yeah but 
the point is like everybody is gonna have their view of how they think superman should be all the time right. you know right. <laughs> and i guess that just goes with every um, movie character that you have it's like or comic book character excuse me that it's more of about how you relate to it and how you perceive it and you know the world you're walking in compared to what you're watching and reading about so i just i hope that he comes back i heard in the rumblings that the actual actor is not going to come back, but they're going to keep the character that was written in man of steel. I don't know how they're going to do that, but um, it, yeah, it's a little odd to me, but, um, <laughs> but Hey man, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, going back to what you said earlier, one thing that I love about your content that you put out, which is on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, everywhere um, is your ability to look like you're flying when I pretty sure you can't, <laughs> can you talk about that for a little bit how you're able to do that without looking like you're jumping like you don't you look like you literally are levitating oh well thank you yeah. um well those are so i started practicing taking levitation shots in 2000, 2012 mm -hmm. so to answer your question that's why there's eight years of work that went into <laughs> practicing that but pretty much i, I just started from um, you know, they're all pretty much self portraits until other people take it. But the main trick for me is to jump with my knees and not my shoulders. So like mm -hmm. when people jump, you're, you're doing upward motion, right? And like, they want to do this, mm -hmm. but if you jump from the bottom half of your body, like your knees to spring yourself up, you're not doing this, you know, uh... cause you're, you're pushing yourself up from your feet. So so to say instead of like trying to do this so that's that's whole, my whole thing is like whenever i jump i try to keep my shoulders as as even as possible so that way it doesn't look like i'm you know jumping yeah. that's crazy well if you haven't um seen it i would definitely recommend you guys going on i think your pinterest is crazy but like your tiktoks that you show um because i think i saw one tiktok where you kind of showed very quickly how you did it. And I was like, how is that puzzle? And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'll be honest. I tried it. I can't do it. I tried. Okay. So <laughs> you're like, yeah, eight years. I bet it did because like I did it for like 20 minutes. I was tired. I was like, forget it. I can't do this. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's cool because like what I love about it is your aesthetic. So jumping over to your Instagram for a second, I know I'm going all over social media, but it's just like, I just want to know, I think, my thing is, is that I feel like social media, if you do it correctly, shows different sides of who you are as a person. And um, your aesthetic on TikTok is very different from your aesthetic on Instagram. So if you would describe your aesthetic on Instagram, because when I was scrolling through, I noticed like you, you make particular choices when you post, what you post, when you post, how you post, like the color grading, everything. Um, for you, what, how would you describe it? Um, dark and moody or lighthearted how would you how would you uh i've it's the instagram is it's a little bit becoming more of kind of how i'm feeling at the moment now i mean i when i first started out i wanted it to be just like all superman stuff right away right mm -hmm. and then working on trying to build my brand i had to get out of my own way of like perfect grids and like this this and that you know so then i started trying to um post things that I wanted to and like kind of open up more about what I wanted to talk about and stuff like that. So I think with Instagram is mainly getting out of my own way to not have like a perfect, um, you know, grid. Cause I did try that. And, but that's the also thing like being a creative person, it's hard to just stick to one thing all the yeah. time. Yeah. So like I there, but like I've had ideas to post stuff and I'm like, no, I can't do this. Cause then it's going to go against this other one. And, mm -hmm. and that's why like when you scroll through, you could just see it all like different shifts all, all the time. Cause I'll just be in different moods mm -hmm. from like what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important because you don't want to ever try to limit yourself, I guess, so to speak, you know what I mean? And trying to fit like an aesthetic thing. Cause you think that's like going to get you more business or, or help with people it's really like in my experience puts you in a box because there's a lot of times that I just didn't say what I wanted to say or post something because it was going to clash with the picture above it or below it. And it wasn't until actually like I got out of that, that I started like, you know, gaining more traction with, um, with myself in, you know, the world. So like, for example, 
when people would do uh, fan art of me, I never posted it before, like on my on my face. I'm like, I don't want to post this. It's going to go against my photos and stuff. And then I was like, you know what? That's dumb. If people like literally take the time to look at my face and draw it, you know, like the least I could do is like stick it on my on my social media refrigerator, my Instagram page, right? Yeah. So I started doing that. And also like I, I wanted to do that too is because I wanted to encourage other artists to draw me as well. And I knew that if I were to post stuff from people drawing me, somebody else that was like looking to further their brand or like to have more people go to them, like, you know, I have a, I don't have a huge account, but I have, a, you know, some people there. So like if people see somebody else draw me, then if they wanted to try to get some traction, they could draw me too, because they see that I post what people draw of me. So mm -hmm. that's a kind of a way to encourage people, you know, mm -hmm. which is another way to get, content for myself as well yeah do you that's the first time i've ever actually said that to anybody out loud <laughs> hey man i asked the, i asked the questions on the show okay <laughs> um but you know well, but it's, it's just <laughs> go ahead no it, i'm sorry it's just like because people are like man people draw you all the time and da, 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 da. like how do you and i'm like well because i share it you know like yeah. and these same people that ask me this stuff they have their photos that they have in their story like once, you know, and they don't put anything out, but see, so that's why one of the main things that got me to do that is I start looking at all these like huge cosplayers accounts. Right. Mm -hmm. And they would post, um, all the fan drawings, like all the, like they weren't trying to fit into one thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what helped me kind of get out of that grid because I want to be known ultimately for, for me. Mm -hmm. I do want people to know me for Superman, but like, mm -hmm. I want to be able to post like, you know how you just like see people post a picture of their foot and it gets like a million likes because it's their <laughs> yeah. foot. And you're like, what the heck is wrong with people that like this photo of a foot? But it's not the whole, it's not the foot. It's because it's that person's foot and they like that person. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I want to, I eventually want people to start liking me for what I do and talk about mm -hmm. as opposed to only liking pictures of me um in the superman suit so that's one of the reasons why i started to break out of that and going back to the whole like picture thing and people like people draw you all the time and nobody wants to draw me and stuff i'm like well the people that do draw you you hide it in a story somewhere if you actually probably were like you know to be proud of this stuff and post it it'll probably encourage more people to do that but people don't want to do that because they don't want to break their aesthetic grid you know what i mean so right. it's like you know yeah what I'm saying like, I'm literally, this is the only time I've said this a lot to anybody. So whoever's hearing this for everybody that drew me, thank you. But this is also why, like, you know, it's, I appreciate it. And, yeah, and people it, would probably get more, more stuff if they showed off what people did for them. Yeah. And I think that it also helps build brand and sense of the community part. So one of the things is like, I'm sure 99% of the people that draw you and post their art about you aren't doing it just because they want to get their name out there. They want to, you know, show their appreciation, see your art and try to not necessarily replicate it, but like show their appreciation for your art. And so I, I'm sure that doing that not only helps you, but helps them as well because they feel like they've connected with you. You know, right. it's not it's just the whole kind of golden rule thing, like the whole yeah. Superman thing, right? Like I want you to feel appreciated. Like you, and I, I can't draw. I mean, I need to stop saying Same. that out loud, you know, but like, I'm not good at drawing at the moment. Mm -hmm. So when people like literally like, and there, I put some art up there where like, um, the people like embarrassed to send it to me cause they didn't like it, but I'm like, Aww. yeah, but they still wanted to draw me. Right. Yeah. And they seem like, oh, I know this isn't good, but you know, I just wanted Aww. to say like, and I'm like, oh, and I still post it because like, I can't do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like, however bad you think your art is, I cannot do it. So, I mean, like, it's it's always, like, an honor to be drawn by somebody, you know? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and, I mean, it's it's what I love. And because TikTok is one of my most – you know, if you asked me five months ago, six months ago, what do you think about TikTok? I'd be like, it's ridiculous. Like, there's no – why why would anyone – and now I spend, like, three hours a day on that stupid app. Because you find so many talented people that one, a lot of times they don't know that they're talented or two, they don't think that they're that good. But then you go, you go through and you're just like, dang, like they're just sitting here and they should be discovered. And then, you know, they blow up in like three days. They have like over a hundred thousand, you know, followers. So it's good to find community, but also I think it's awesome because people are able to express themselves better. 
Um, right. instead of just going to work, whatever their nine to five is or whatever, and then coming home and like saying, I wish I could have, should have, you know? So, um, are you, so one of the things that I, one of the things I do on the show is that I, and you know this cause I sent it to you is there's a survey that I send to, um, the people that I interview. And, um, one of the things is like, tell me something about yourself. So what I found interesting is you put in the survey was that you used to be a cop. Right. So did you, is that where you transitioned over to start doing creativity stuff at, from that position or were you doing something else before that? No. So like I was a cop, that was my first career job. I didn't go to college. So this was like in, in 2006, I went to the, I, I never really wanted to be a policeman, but in 2006, the starting salary was 54 a year, which is pretty good. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so like I had a serious girlfriend at the time. And I was like, I want to get like a really good career job. And for that reason, LAPD was hiring. I make it all the way through the academy. Um, my first day at my training, I asked five different police officers, like three, three men and two women, like, what's your number one piece of advice to give me? Mm -hmm. You would think they say like, watch your back, you know, always make sure your gun. Every single one of them told me not to get married. They're like, you're going to get, you're going to get divorced. And then you're going to have to pay like all the stuff. And like, you're what? a good looking guy. Don't do it. And like, <laughs> and I'm just like, and then like, you know, all the statistics for policemen are like, you know, very high, like suicide rate and, wow. and like all this stuff. And I didn't want to lose like my sense of like, you know, joy to the world. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of cops are jaded people because they see the worst situations all the time mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. and even like i only lasted maybe like a month and a half before i quit out of training mm -hmm. you know my yeah. first week i saw three dead bodies my very first week of working i had to arrest mm -hmm. like two mothers on christmas that were just arguing with each other in front of their whole families oh. and i'm just like i don't yeah and it's like i don't want to do this for the rest yeah. of my life <laughs> so, oh man yeah it was it, it was, was a lot so i was like and even though the academy was hard, I mean, like I had to do that for about nine months and it was a whole like pass fail thing, you know? So mm -hmm. like I had to be on my toes all the time and I made it through and I'm grateful for that experience because it did teach me a lot. Mm -hmm. But I literally like after that, I, I quit because like I don't want to do this the rest of my life. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> um, uh, I didn't expect to hear that from you. Um, are you what was your reasoning as to why you switched over to doing what you're doing now? Like what was this? Were you always a creative person growing up? Yes, I was. Okay. So, so I, uh, in 2012, I left Los Angeles to go live in Texas. Mm -hmm. Um, and I got another career job working for the railroad. So I was conductor for Union Pacific okay. and it was a really good paying job, but I had absolutely like zero time. So like I was always, and they tell you this too, like when they hire you, they're like, we're going to make a lot of money, but we like own you pretty much. So my first year working for them, I made just a little bit over a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But also that first year, um, like I think my, my longest streak was working like 13 days in a row. And like the longest on shift I've had was like over 20, like 25 hours straight. And that's like the longest. So I had like plenty of 18, 19, 20, 21 hours you know so I was always at work all, and I was like this is not um like I wanted to try to figure out how to make money being creative because I went to school for like one of those trade schools for graphic design and everything and mm -hmm. once I got out um I kind of started dabbling in it but I found out everybody just wanted the same stuff all the time like they just wanted the same logos the same this the same that so I basically put all that creativity stuff on hold because I'm like, I didn't go to school for it and all mm -hmm. the stuff that I am applying for, like people want experience, you know? Mm -hmm. And even like, so I was like, I ah, just forget it. So then I found a good job being a conductor, but I slowly was getting done with that. And I was on a date one day, it was 2016 and in, in summer, I was on my way to a date and I almost got in a car accident on the freeway. Um, I did a 180 across Ooh. like three or four lanes of traffic 
Oh my God. Um, and I didn't hit anything. Like I didn't hit not one car. I was like literally this far away from the median. It was crazy. Wow. Um, the police had to come and like block the whole freeway for me to do another 180 to get off. And they were just like, <laughs> They're just like, man, I don't know how you. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. But after that, huh. I took that. It was like a sign, like you know, I should really, you know, pursue what I want because this was 2016. In 2013, Man of Steel came out, and I was still like in Texas. So literally, I looked. I must have went to like every single Joanne's Fabrics in like the Fort Worth area. Called like every old lady that I saw had a business card and asked if they. Like I tried to find somebody to make me that suit. I couldn't find anybody. I didn't want like mm. a party city one because it mm. would have looked, you know, like it would have been not how I wanted to do my photos, you know? Right. So I kind of just put that whole thing on the back burner. Like, I guess it's not going to happen. But then when I almost got in an accident or, you know, I could have been dead or seriously injured. And mm. I was like, I, I really should probably try to do what, at least what I want to do in life. Mm. So that was in August of 2016. Uh, my lease was up in November. So from August to November, I started like getting my affairs in order, um, selling off a bunch of stuff, trying to find a van. Um, so I was like, I'll just quit everything. Um, I'll try to find a Superman suit and go to Seattle so I could try to like photograph myself around Seattle. And I picked over there because it's a really beautiful area. And at the time, back in 2016, like Instagram was full of all the like photographers that are doing all the nature cool stuff, you know, like. Right all on the coast and the girls in their wide brim hats, you know, and like all these, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, I love all of these settings cause I love to travel. So like, I love all of these different types of settings. And a lot of them were set in the Pacific Northwest. So I'm like, I bet if I bring my, like get a nice Superman suit, I could do all this stuff over there because there wasn't really also a lot of cosplayers doing this stuff either mm -hmm. at the time. They were just like, you know, either doing green screen stuff or, mm -hmm you know, stuff on, there wasn't really a lot of people doing like scenic on location levitation shots. Like I knew I wanted to do, you know what I mean? So in November I quit my job. I walked in, I handed them my like radio, my keys and stuff. And they're like, are you sure you want to do this? I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. And I mm -hmm. got a van, I bought it for $800 and I drove out to, to Seattle to start. Um, after two months of being in Seattle, I found somebody to make a suit. So I ordered my Superman suit in March mm -hmm. and I got it in October of that year, which wow. wasn't supposed to be that long, that but long, yeah. it just was. Mm -hmm. That taught me a lot about patience. So <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically um it's funny because i'm um, seattle superman and everything right but if you really look at it i really only had my superman suit in seattle from october 2017 to june of 2018 wow so how first of all who did you find to make the suit i didn't even think until you said make it i was like he must have got it somewhere like a oh yeah, I found I found a uh, somebody on Etsy that that made it. So. Oh okay. But he outsourced it to other people too, so like it was just kind of one thing after the other that was like he couldn't get the emblem first, and then it was like this and that, and you know it was really trying my patience because I just quit everything to try to do this, and then imagine getting it literally seven eight months later. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, gosh. so I spent the first yeah the first my first summer in Seattle. My first like eight, yeah, because I got there, I left Texas November 2016. So like, yeah, all of up until October 2017, I didn't have the suit. So I just had to like, I pretty much spent that time scouting locations and stuff and like doing all this other photography mm. um, until I got the suit. Oh my God. Are you um, still in Seattle? right now no like so no currently now i'm in pennsylvania so when i quit um when i quit that job so i didn't have a place to live right so i lived out of my van in seattle for a year and a half wow. i kind of got tired yeah i was like but like i said how much money i was making on my other job i still had bills and stuff right so they were mm -hmm. slowly starting to pile up more because mm -hmm. i got a job washing dishes in seattle that i did for a year and a half for like 15 dollars an hour Oh and, event, and then I was like, I need to, right. So I wanted to pick one of the 
most boring jobs I could find to keep me on track with the whole Superman thing. So I, that's why I chose to just do that and have a, have enough money for like gas food. Cause you know, I wasn't paying rent. The only thing I had to do was pay storage mm-hmm. um, for some of my stuff. Mm-hmm. So I got tired of that <laughs> after a year and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was got like, tired of that after the first month. <laughs> I was like, I need to start making some money because I want to get out of credit card debt. I need to buy a new van. I wanted to get another camera and like more like toys, laptop, you know, stuff. Mm-hmm. So I I put my resume up online again and literally the first like in the next couple of days, this company called that hires railroad conductors. Um, to do like independent contracts. Mm. So at first I wasn't going to do it because they told me like, Hey, they have this contract for a year in Montana. And I'm like, okay, cool. Montana is pretty like Western Montana is, but they're like, no, it's going to be in Eastern Montana, which is, I was literally like 10 miles away from North Dakota. So I was like way, oh. and maybe like five hours away from Saskatchewan. So I was like way, way, way up in a town of like 5,000 people. And nobody was there. I'm like, well, this was, and I had to be there um, July of 2018. So I just had my suit for seven months in Seattle. And I'm like, uh, man, I wanted to get another job. I did the work to put myself out there to get a job. And now that I have this great op, because they're they going to pay my hotel in Montana. So I didn't have to pay rent for more. They put me up for a whole year. And it was awesome. X amount of dollars a day, five days a week, regardless of how many hours I work, which mm. was great. Mm-hmm. So I, it was going to be like a really lucrative job. I just had to literally leave Seattle, you know, and then go spend the next year in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> but Jeez. I did decide to do that, though, because like this, this is what I asked for. And I knew that if I did that also, I could spend a whole year making content and being like, you know, putting myself out. I might not have had like the nice scenic locations, but I could start utilizing like um, Twitter and like learning how to take better photos against green screens and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And then like kind of go and explore in Montana when I can, well, at least some of the scenic spots. So I left there, went to go work for a year. And then they're like, oh, actually, we have you here for like a year and a half. And so it ended up being a year and a half. So I was in Montana for a year and a half, but in that year and a half, I went viral on Twitter. That was the first time that I put like four photos of Superman up on Twitter and went viral there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but there in that, during that year and a half, I paid all my credit cards off. I bought a new van, but all these different like toys and stuff to do. So it was a pretty, pretty good, good thing to happen. I just had to sacrifice being around people for the most part, you know, but so I took that year and a half to just really hone in on. And I first started TikTok when I was out there in Montana too. Oh, okay. Okay. So that contract ended in January, in December 31st of last year. Right. So then I was like to 2020, I've never lived on the East coast before. So I said to myself, I want to go live on the East coast. So I saved some money from that contract. And I went to New York. I stayed a month in New York. Mm -hmm. And then halfway through that month of January, my company that I independent contract for was like, hey, we have a job for you in Vermont. It's supposed to be five months. If you want to go up there, it starts um, the third week of February. So I was like, Mm -hmm. okay. I wanted to live on the East Coast. Vermont's like smack dab, pretty much in the middle of all New England. And like, you know, everything is so close together. It won't be that big of a deal. I could take time off to go travel to, you know, Boston or New York and stuff or Pennsylvania. Well, uh, after I left New York, I had a friend that I have met through Instagram that lives in Pennsylvania. So she's, she was in California with her boyfriend. She's like, well, if you need a place to stay, you could stay at my house in, in Pennsylvania. You know, I'd appreciate it because then you could like, you know, so pretty much house it. So like, okay. So I was at this same house here in February. Mm-hmm. I go up to Vermont. I work about a month and COVID happens. Right. So they're like, Oh, we don't need you anymore. Well, oh. they, didn't, it's not like they didn't need me, but the whole, cause the, the state of Vermont was paying our contract. Oh. Um, cause they were like doing some stuff for the railroad, but they totally shut that down. 
obviously they probably need that money to go somewhere else more money, you know like the unemployment probably <laughs> yes i know they're probably still paying too <laughs> yeah and they had they had like eight of us so all eight of us contractors they um they they pause the contract which i'm still waiting Yikes. to see like if i'm even going to go back up there or not um so after that was done that was like april of this year so my friend was like, Hey, can you go back to my house? Um, you know, you probably have a lot of other people to help that want to host you and stuff, but I'd appreciate it if you could, you know, come back there and mail me some stuff. And I mean, she's got homeowners in a really nice area. So like literally she had to like call me one day and tell me to mow some part of her grass because somebody like called on her and she didn't want to get fined. So like oh that. Oh my happened. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so mowing so people's like, lawns? <laughs> So yeah, so like that time, so like I'm staying here, which is not, and she's still stuck in California, right? Because she, mm-hmm. she's got a bad like kind of respiratory, so mm-hmm. she doesn't want to get on a plane to fly back here. So she's out, excuse me, she's out there. Mel, so long story short, I'm in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long are you going to be in Pennsylvania? Is this something? Do you like Pennsylvania? Uh, I do, but I'm I'll probably be here as long as I'm in this this house for, I guess, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then wherever the next contract takes me that's where they'll pay for my next hotel room and then i'll just so for the most part i'm still kind of living out of that van you know what i mean like it's Mm. just a van to a hotel to like i literally sleep on this couch right here um (laughs) (laughs) so it's like i'm still like kind of living out of on the road type of life i don't really know when i'm going to pick a spot to settle down in because there's so many places i want to live still or like travel to are you um so ultimately i would assume you want to be making enough money where you'll just be doing the creative side and not doing the other stuff so um is this something where the van life that you have going on because i think i saw it on your i want to say it was on your face facebook uh twitter i don't know but um you talked about um van life and like how it's changed your perspective and like you got to meet you know, different types of people and see different places. Um, ultimately, when you do settle down, is this something, where is it that you want to see your um, career to be going creatively? Uh, I just want to be like a big enough person to where somebody could, um, you know, pay me to make like a, a post or something or like, you know, um, okay. I guess kind of be an influencer in that way, but like on my terms, you know what I mean? Like people have already reached out for stuff that I just tell them no or like mm-hmm. don't want to like hey try this ice cream like can you we'll pay you to like try our products i'm like i don't really like ice cream so no or like <laughs> you know like <laughs> like <laughs> i want to be like authentic to and which is why i'm still working this other job that i want because i'm not like taking every single thing that pops up right away mm-hmm. but also like people have sent um stuff for me to evaluate and like leave reviews on which is mm-hmm. great because that's another level I think of like success for me for a company that like wants to send me something for me to use and then like write a review on. So that's happened a couple of times, which is nice. Um, But honestly, it's only been probably like two and a half years. I mean, October, 2017 until now. So like two and a half, almost three years Mm -hmm. Um, still just working forward to getting to that point of where enough people might know who I am to where companies want to start working with me. So and, what was, oh, go ahead. No, that was, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Oh, well, I was just going to ask, what would you say to people who want to do what you're doing? Not necessarily exact thing, what you're doing, but to change over from either their nine to five or a career path that they feel like they're doing it just to make ends meet versus stepping out and going after their creative passion. And, you know, what is it that you would recommend for them? Do you say save up some money and, and do it or just stop everything and, and just go for it? Uh, well, in my case, like it was that whole like life or death thing, right? So that whole right. that whole thing was an eye opener for me because mm-hmm. like I was, before I was like, yeah, this is cool. I want to find a Superman suit. And then I just stopped looking because I, I just couldn't find one, you know, or like I was still doing photography at the time, but I never thought of it as a way to make money because I always had this safety net of my good job, you know? But mm-hmm. that day that I almost got in the accident, made me realize like I was doing like I 
I could have just like ended my life not doing what I felt like I was put here on earth to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the whole thing. Like, I guess my, my whole thing would be like, make sure that you know what you want to do, not just for money. Because if I, if I never made, like, I still haven't made up any money from, from this. So I, it's almost three years now. I haven't made one cent. I've had people give me things. I've had like, you know, stuff like that, but I actually haven't even made money, but I continue to do this because it's something that I feel like I supposed to be doing, you know what I mean? And also like, it's, I love being creative doing this stuff. So all of the hardships that I was talking about, which we haven't even gone through all of them, mm-hmm. but like, you know, living in a van and not having my suit for like seven months mm-hmm. and like wanting to quit and like working like, I wash dishes, right? But I, I got, I've actually had like four jobs washing dishes at some point in oh Seattle, goodness. trying to like, trying to make money. And that's like what ultimately led me to getting that contract in Montana because mm-hmm. I was like, I just wanted to start, keep making money for stuff. Van problems, like my very first summer in Seattle, my van broke down and I lived in a parking garage for one whole month working. I was a dishwasher at, in daytime and then at night I got a job busing at lucky strike to try to save up like a thousand dollars to buy another van and that was like my my very first that was my very first june in seattle you know living Mm -hmm. out of a parking garage uh because i couldn't drive my car and luckily i like got it to a parking garage i paid them a monthly fee and i just had to every day like sleep in the parking garage go to work and then go to the other job and then go back to the parking garage i took the bus with a gym bag full of clothes all the time to go wash my clothes and stuff. But I say all that to say, like, if you don't really know what you want to be doing, it's, it's, you're going to get in those situations and be like, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. or like, or like people that want like short term gain, like, Oh, I'm pretty, or I'm smart, or I'm pretty sure if I like take a couple of photos like this, like I'll be popular. And so like, it doesn't always work that way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, you got to just make sure that you know what you're doing. So that way um, it drives you to do what you want. Like Montana, I said I was there for a year and a half. I didn't go on like one. I went on one date in, in Montana, mm-hmm. um, which was only like three hours. So like I didn't no physical affection at all. Then the wow. whole year and a half I was there um, because I just didn't go there for that. I went yeah. there so I could work, save up money pay off all my bills and stuff. So that way I wanted to like have a clean slate for the new decade. I don't want to be in debt or anything. I have a new van, new stuff. So I literally would just like be on my phone and be at work all the time, socializing on the phone, uh, you know, making content, doing it. So it's all like, I mean, all of that led me to my conversation with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it all led up to this. <laughs> but you know what I mean? And so that's why like, like I had a I had a podcast actually earlier today somebody asked me to be on so I was like yeah I'll be on your show and then like um but it's 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 because all of this like people want to to talk and to like interview and stuff so can you imagine if I was like trying to get to this spot and you're like hey can you be on my show I'm like no you know like how many people how many people uh tune into you how many people do what like Mm -hmm. I'm trying to build myself as a brand right so obviously i'm thankful for you even wanting me to be on your show can you imagine me like talking all this game about wanting to be somewhere and then like nah i don't think i want to be on your thing i've never heard of you before no thanks you know come back later so like and that's another thing i would tell the people it it just takes a lot of work like you know you you just got to put the time in for it yeah I know. And, it, and it, it's very, you know, social media, it's very much about, it seems like fast, quick success. Like, it seems like it's like, Hey, I posted three TikToks. I'm now TikTok famous. And I'm just like, it just, you, you got to put the work in. And, um, I think that I'm, I mean, I'm very thankful that you're, you're on the show, but also it's, it's much more about what attracted me to even contact you is that, even though you are very much about spreading hope and positivity, like you're extremely humble in how you promote your content. um, The way that you promote your content, the type of content that you make, it's a very humble, open platform that you, that you have. I don't know if you know that or not, but um, it's seen in how you like the little things like um, there's a TikTok I was watching when I first 
found out about you where you were taking pictures in Seattle and you had intercuts of like people stopping you to take pictures with you that didn't know who you were. And you're just like, yeah, you're in the middle of like trying to like look like you're flying off a rock. And then you're just like, let's take pictures. So <laughs> I just, I, I think it's awesome because a lot of times we get caught up in like the hustle and trying to, to build up our brand and who we are, but then we forget like we're still humans. We're still trying to connect with other people. So right. um, I think that's cool. But um, I've kept you on way too long. I know I have, but I'm going to ask you like a round of questions and then I'll, I'll let you go. Okay. So oh, I mean, I, I'm not at work. So if you I don't feel like you have to cut this short because of, of me, I literally, after this, I'm probably going to play Call of Duty or work on some more stuff. So like, oh, honestly, so you're not, you're not keeping me from doing anything. Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, what, um, in your dream scenario, um, would you consider like acting or, um, being in something that's, more than just building your brand online is that something that you would would aspire to do as well yeah i would like actually somebody had reached out to me like a month ago because they they found me on tic tac too and i guess she does like she does stuff for this museum in ohio and mm -hmm. she was putting together some like virtual like space station type storyline and she said like i look like i would be perfect for one of her characters right so she's like hey would you like to record some lines and send them to me to be in this museum I'm like oh hell yeah i would right <laughs> so so she sends, she sends me like some scripts and stuff and i'm like reading it and then i hit record and like totally forgetting everything i i'm like this is harder than <laughs> i know <laughs> like i'm not i'm not an actor i know like when i make my own stuff i look like i could be an actor but that's just me doing my own thing you know but like when people put their stuff in front of my face and I'm like, like trying, then I have to like act and I'm like, Oh, is it fun? Yeah, it's fun. But I'm like, Oh, that's, that's totally different. Yeah. I would love the opportunities to do stuff like that. Um, and to work with other people that would be, you know, just kind of getting to that point where like people will want to work and collab with me and stuff. Like there's a lot of different storylines and like things that I want to put out there um, that, that have to do with me working with other people because there's only so much stuff i could do on my own you know yeah <laughs> so yeah so yeah eventually like getting to that part where i could tell stories at a larger scale um which is mainly what i really want to do is just be able to fund myself to be able to tell the stories that i want to and so what um for you what kind of stories are is is that is that something that like stuff you've gone through and experienced is it um characters that you want to explore more is it yeah, like, like for instance like right now i just posted something and it's it's like i have this whole idea with this like time traveler kind of like wizard person right and mm -hmm. like set in this kind of cyberpunk era that time travels right mm -hmm. so that is like a story i want to try to tell more and i just came up with the title of it, it was like tomorrow tomorrow was such a long time ago because it's like mm -hmm. a whole like time traveling thing. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of learning like after effects and special effects and stuff and trying to film myself different ways. But there's, like I said, there's only so far I could go to without like a huge, you know, warehouse or like a, not huge, but like, you know, green screens here and there and like having other people record and film stuff. Cause I, you know, so like just telling like, stuff on a larger scale is what I would eventually like to get to. For now, I have to stick to the 15 second TikTok clips. Of <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> stuff. <laughs> you have a timer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know it's, um, it's interesting because like, I'm very new to TikTok. I'm, I'm more of a viewer than a content creator, which is a bad thing to say since I'm a filmmaker, but um, I just love it. I'm so in love with, with TikTok. It's just like you find and meet so many talented people on there. So, um, one of the things that I wonder is, do you have any ambition to like make stuff for YouTube that's longer scale, like your TikToks? Or oh yes, um, I have. I have like, I have some stuff on my YouTube actually, yeah. of, like just different ideas here and there that that I put out. Um, yeah. They're probably all like, like I made, I made like a music video to a song. I was music to me is like a really good way to be inspired for art so like there's this one song i heard and i wanted to like record a whole music video to it so i did that in the hotel that i was staying at in vermont before that whole contract got canceled mm -hmm. um but yeah there are different like 
you know, but you know how it is. You're, you said you were a filmmaker. You get all these ideas and you're like, how am I going to put these ideas out there? Yeah. So that's like, I do this, I do it a lot with photos. You know, I'd like to express how I feel and like certain things with photos, mm -hmm. but I'm really starting to get into more. Um, and I guess I shouldn't say like get in into it because I have always liked video aspects of stuff, but I guess I should say like have the patience to do it now because like, whereas I could take, the same two hours to go scouting in a location, change into a Superman suit, take some photos, mm -hmm. and then have like a bunch of content. The same two hours would be like me trying to record like one clip of myself, you know, <laughs> or like yeah. doing After Effects or because setting up the camera and doing like, you know, remote shutter from my phone is one thing for photos. But when I have to like, you know, set the exposure and make sure it's not like, a, uh, going from cloudy to over cloudy and then having my filters on mm -hmm. and then like have making sure that it's um you know setting manual focus and i'm not too blurry or i don't like move my hands in and out of the frame or something mm -hmm. like that you know it could you could spend a whole lot of time <laughs> trying to do like one, yeah. one thing as yeah. opposed to like you know having somebody actually film yourself but i don't mm -hmm. have that person right now right? right so that's why it's like i even bought a drone that has the whole hand motions to where like, you know, you could like tell it to follow you and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it works a little bit, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? So like always trying to think of like the most effective ways. Like I think I'm going to order um, one of those tripod heads that like the automatic panners. Like, the things yeah, I've pan. seen those. You know? Those look cool. Yeah, so that yeah. would really come in handy with me. I mean, mm -hmm. in reality, should I get on Instagram and like network around people in Philadelphia that want to like meet up or have interest and stuff like that? I'm like, yeah, I probably should. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, I also know how I want to be filmed too. So I figure if I do it myself, it'll come out right how I want. So that's the whole like internal struggle there. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I wonder, it's, it's, um, it's interesting because like, you look at these YouTubers that are like making tons of money, like just blogging. I'm like, how in the world are they getting these shots? And I realize, oh, they have a team. There are people that are shooting them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just them holding the camera. It's like five people with like audio and visual and lighting and, you know, behind the camera. So, but, uh, but yeah, well, I would say keep doing what you're doing. Cause I just, I love like check, like how many times do you post TikTok? Like, a day like three or four times a day at least yeah i try to do like that and it's funny because like i was against tiktok and musically at first so like yeah. going back to your other piece of advice to mm -hmm. give people is like i guess i could say that now with hindsight it's not to be afraid to, to to do new apps like i was supposed to start with like five people like i was like oh let's get on musically apparently it's supposed to be really big so let's i was like the only person that did it because everybody else was like this is dumb or like you know i'm too old for this or like i don't know any of the songs which was my whole thing too when i first looked at it i'm like i would type in all the artists that i like and there was nothing and then i'm like <laughs> listening through all these songs I'm like who are all these people with these like kids listen to this stuff now what the hell is this you know <laughs> so i just like literally I like made an account and i'm like i'm not doing this you know and then it wasn't until august of last year is when I actually like took it seriously. I was like, I'm going to start trying to like figure out how, and like, you know, with all the different stuff I have from the photos to like trying to teach people how to do stuff. And that's, mm -hmm. that was me like trying to be consistent and like make myself at least try to post X amount of times a day. Cause I knew eventually it would lead me to like ideas of what to post and make without like having to do like dance videos and stuff, which is what I thought it would have to do to be popular on there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just, it's just, I guess, not being afraid to try something different. If it works, like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, Vero, and we tried to do that. And then, you know, that went away. But, and there's like so many people, should I do TikTok? I don't know. I'm like, just do it, man. You're looking for a reason for me to tell you, like you're looking for a reason to tell me why you don't want to do it. Like you don't really want uh, me to tell you to do it. You know, you know how yeah. you tell people stuff and they're just like, doesn't matter what you say, they're just gonna be like, no, I don't think so. So I'm like, you know what? <laughs> why did I waste my breath? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, but once I got out of myself with that, I mean, and that's a whole other thing because like up until that point, I was on Instagram for two years mm -hmm. and like barely got up to 10,000 followers on Instagram and 
Now on TikTok, from doing that consistently, not even a full year, I'm almost at a hundred thousand. Wow. And then like, right. But then like two years from now, there's going to be all these people that never got into cosplay before, maybe that I'll be into cosplay in two years. Mm-hmm. And who knows what new app that's going to be. So that means mm-hmm. they got to start all from the ground up another somewhere else. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I guess that would be another don't limit yourself to one thing like you know people don't want to use twitter they don't want to use this they don't want to use pinterest and i'm like yeah. you guys all want to tell me that you see me everywhere and how do i do it and i'm telling you to be <laughs> on everywhere and you're like no nah, it's too much work i'm like okay fine <laughs> why did you ask <laughs> are you is there any one platform that you use that you feel like other than and i'm not talking about numbers of followers but like maybe your engagement or your ability to become more well known other than TikTok that you like? No, it's it's Instagram for sure. That's that's the one that okay. I, yeah, that's the one that I started off on. Like I barely started answering people back on I know I talked to you back on on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um but I then then didn't I tell you like to hit me up on Move Instagram? Up, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go to Instagram I, I never checked the TikTok. Yeah, I remember you telling Because I was that. like because you know what? I don't know why TikTok does this, but like I literally turn off every notification on there because I don't want to get notifications on my that was so weird. I don't want to get notifications <laughs> on my phone, but it, even if I set it to only get direct messages, mm-hmm. it'll still send me other type of notifications for like who's going live and all this stuff. So I'm like, this mm-hmm. is annoying me. So now yeah. I just like never forget to, I just always forget to check the DMs on there. But on Instagram, like I'm always on the DMs and Instagram like all the time because that's what I, that's where a lot of people first discovered me from was Instagram. So Slide into the DMs. That's right. (laughs) That's what I hear. That's what everyone tells me. Doesn't happen to me, but that's what that tells me. Um, (laughs) But uh, but yeah, I you know it's interesting because like recently, what I've been seeing on yours is you've been really promoting Pinterest, and you've been saying, hey, you know, you guys need to be getting on it. Like I never thought of Pinterest as being a thing for like building your brand as the same way that you do it on TikTok or you do it on Instagram because like. I mean, my, I know everyone's Pinterest board is different, but mine's like how to make like tofu taste like chicken. Like it's not, it's not about like, and then the funny part is, is then I start seeing you on there and I'm like, how did they know that I follow him? And then I start following you. So the algorithm yeah. on Pinterest is weird. Um, yeah. But see, like you just proven the point too. Like some, somebody that wrote that, how to put, make tofu taste like chicken, right. Had to put that on Pinterest somewhere. So yeah. like, you went to their personal blog or some some like cook or chef's personal blog or blog or something to find this recipe, you know, through Pinterest. And that just applies for everything because Pinterest is so vast. Like, you know, so I knew because, you know, like on Pinterest, too, like it's pretty repetitive. You can start seeing the same pictures over and over again. And I yeah. think that's because nobody puts new stuff on Pinterest really. Like you, if you go like to oh. arts artists and stuff, like mm-hmm. you see the same pictures and the same thing over and over and over again. That was like five years ago, six years ago, mm-hmm. because people just don't think to like update their stuff and put new stuff on Pinterest. Right. Mm. So like, before I even got on there, you type in black Superman or like Superman cosplayers, Mm -hmm. not really a lot of people show up on there. It's all like Superman drawings or like fan art or like, you know, pictures of Henry Cavill or Christopher Reeves. There really wasn't a lot of like different things because nobody like updates stuff in Pinterest. So I'm like, well, I like to tell people to do that, but Mm -hmm. if they don't want to do it, then fine. They can look at me because I'll do it. (laughs) So that's that's, that's what I was like. There's always like room for that because... Mm -hmm. We, there are so many people and even like with the podcast here, like what I do with my podcast, I'll just put a photo up. Like, as you know, like when you click on the picture, it just takes you to wherever you want to go. Like, right. So I'll put a picture up and then put a podcast link in it. So if they click on it, sometimes it'll take them to my website. Sometimes it'll take them to a TikTok. Sometimes it'll take it to like something, mm-hmm. but you know, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't hurt to like do one of those extra things too. What, what, how, you, as far as engagement for Pinterest, how long have you been on Pinterest, like, for to build your brand? Have you just started, is this something that's you've been doing for quite a while in comparison to TikTok and Instagram and Twitter? Or is this something uh, that you're much years. more heavier on? About two years? It's like, yeah, it's about two years that I've started, like, because basically, like, whenever I post a picture on Instagram, I'll copy that link and I'll put it on um, Pinterest, right? And then, like, 
I go through all these all these phases. So one month I might hit hard with like hashtags of like Superman cosplay because then I just want people to like find me through a hashtag Superman cosplay. So then I'll just like make a board and upload all that stuff. And then maybe like a month later I'll be I'll put my all the fan art that people do of me, mm-hmm. I'll put that up there with Superman, right? Mm-hmm. So then maybe a month later I want I want to like have people look for if they're looking for like black Superman or something, then I'll like change all the metadata to say black Superman. and I'll put all those up, you know? So it's basically oh, like cool. the same photos of me, mm-hmm. but they all have different tags and file names. So that way when people type in stuff, hopefully it'll lead them to like a picture of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get a lot of engagement through Pinterest much more than you want, assume to have? Uh, yeah. I mean, so like my analytics for, from my website um like one of the top three sources of traffic from to my website is from pinterest actually wow yeah that's crazy i never i mean you know they always harp on the big ones the twitter facebook um instagram and now tiktok i never thought as far as building personal brand how much that would mean for um for pinterest but i guess well the reason i guess the reason why is because like and I read this article somewhere like a long time ago, because when you look at when you type in images or do Google searches, mm-hmm. the next time you type in something to find a picture, like just notice how many of those pictures are from Pinterest. So it's like, OK, well, that's and that's pretty much the only reason why I started hitting it heavier, because if you type in like Superman or or tofu or in, like chicken, you know, if you mm-hmm. type in something in Google, just pay attention to how many of those actual pictures will take you to Pinterest. So like a lot of a lot of photos, Google uses a lot of photos from Pinterest to for their image searches and stuff. So oh. that's like one of the main reasons why, because like if people type in stuff for search engines and they, um, you know, if they type in Superman or something mm-hmm. or like Man of Steel cosplay or like a Man of Steel suit, mm-hmm. I want to be one of those people that show up when they mm-hmm. type that stuff in. So that's why I like hit Pinterest so hard to have that option. You know what I mean? That's cool. That's really cool. Well, um, I have a list of random questions to ask you, which I'm going to ask you. Um, They have nothing to do mostly with what we talked about today. So I'm going to ask you quickly. You don't have to think about it too much. Um, Let me see. We'll we'll fire through them and then, um, you know, I'll let you tell everyone where they can reach you, like your, your, you know, your social media and stuff. And then after that, we will say au revoir for now. I'm sure I'm going to interview you again when you're like, you know, TikTok famous, like, <laughs> like have millions of followers. And you'd be like, Rebecca, Rebecca, it's a name. it rings a bell. Um, okay. So where were you born? I was born in Hawaiian gardens, California. Really? Okay. Do you, this is not part of the thing, but do you miss California? I do, but also because I love like living in new cities. I don't miss it as much as I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> what is this <laughs> well because you know like people are just like you know like oh don't you miss home and don't i'm yeah. like i don't really miss home i mean like i love los angeles but like after i live in pennsylvania for a little bit i'll probably go live in another state that i've always been curious about and then i'll go live somewhere else that i've been curious about you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's like do i miss los angeles for is it is yes because i think growing up in los angeles majorly spoiled me with weather with um, yeah, I bet. all the different options of stuff to do at any given time of day. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't realize how lenient like the liquor laws were over there. And, like, <laughs> I mean, like literally like I, I, I do like to drink. So like over yeah. here, for instance, um, they just like, in all the other States that I've lived, there's just so many different weird liquor laws that I t- took for granted, like living in California, let alone like all the different restaurants and food and different yeah. things in there. And then you go live other places you're like, where do you guys have your ceviche and all this other stuff? Like, you know, <laughs> like, like nobody what? has anything. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's just like one of those things, you know? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I was born in Texas and I do not miss it. It was too hot, but I assume if I was born in California, I'd be like, please take me back. I'm currently in Atlanta. So in Atlanta, Georgia. So I do not like the heat here. But, you know, oh, it gets muggy down there. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't get me started. Like, it's when you start seeing, like, your face just sliding down your face and you're not wearing makeup, then that's an issue. Um, <laughs> do you drink coffee? Are you a coffee drinker? I do, actually. How many cups a day do you drink? 
Uh, this is probably my third one. Third or, <laughs> actually, I can't even remember. Third or fourth one. Or do you consider yourself like a really big coffee person? Like there's some people that drink like 10 to 12 cups of coffee a day. No, not that much. Um, I mean, I could still drink coffee and go to sleep afterwards sometimes. Wow. That's how much I, I do am used to with coffee. <laughs> Jeez. What color is your toothbrush? It is, I think, pink. Really? Yeah. I mean, I just go to, when I, you know, I just, you just go to Rite Aid and you grab whatever toothbrush it is. Like, yeah. I think we, we kind of gotten out of what colors mean what when you're <laughs> a certain age, you know, it's like, oh, two of them for a dollar or two for five dollars. You just grab it. And then yeah. <laughs> that's when you get that. home, you're like, oh, it's pink. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> um, texting or talking? What do you prefer? talking and like i am in a big habit of like just sending boy even like even though i'm in instagram dms a lot right yeah i will still send like voice memos to people instead of like texting stuff because it's mm. i feel like that's a little bit more on a personal level you yeah, know so absolutely. sometimes like a lot of times i'll just like record like a, either like a video and like people that have never met me before that like say hello right mm -hmm. or like hi and then i'll just like either send like a video of my face or like a voice message back to them. And they're like, Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I just do that because it's a little bit more personal, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I know we live in a world where texting is just like, if you don't text, there's something wrong with you. So, you know, it's good to get a visual or like an audio, you know, just mm -hmm. to connect with somebody. Um, yeah. That's because originally I was going back to the podcast. I was just going to do audio and I was like, you know, it'd be cool if we did visual. I didn't prepare as early as, as best I could, but you know, we did the best we could. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really do think like the more you connect with someone, the more interesting the conversation becomes. So, you know, okay. Cake or pie? Cake. Why? Pie is, pie is amazing. Messy. <laughs> <gasps> oh my gosh. You haven't had good pie. That's the problem. Um, are you a dog person? I am not. You're I'm not. not. Uh, I'm not really a pet person actually. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure with the conducive with your living style probably would be a That's hard. exactly why. <laughs> yeah. If but if you were if you were, you know, you had a house and whatever, would you be a cat or a dog or, or maybe not? Maybe you're I, No, I wouldn't because I would still like you know how many friends of mine are like, "Oh, I can't go there anywhere because I have to put my dog somewhere." And then they're mm -hmm. like they talk about how much it costs to put the dog in a kennel and like all of a sudden I'm like, no, why would I ever want to subject myself to that on purpose? I'm oh not God. <laughs> <laughs> like it's too much work. It's too much work. <laughs> too much work. Have you ever Instagrammed your food? Uh, yeah, I do it on my stories all the time. I don't think I've done it. And like, I don't think I like a real post, like where people leave likes. I can't say that I have. I don't wow. think so. No. That's amazing. I think I did. Or used to. Like five years ago. Stories all the time, yes. Food, yeah. no. Do you cook a lot or are you more of a I go out and eat and take out and all that stuff? Because you do travel, uh, so I assume you Yeah. So when I when I get to live in places that have like a stove and everything like yeah. here, then yeah. But when I don't, it's a lot of like takeout and stuff or top ramen and tuna <laughs> oh god like when i lived in a band for a year and a half i pretty much ate walmart fried chicken <laughs> um canned ravioli and tuna package oh. for like a year and a half that's you poor that poor man. <laughs> oh my god okay that was i did not expect that either um describe yourself in three words <laughs> that, that may be a good answer <laughs> yeah I, I don't know there we go <laughs> yeah that works that works what is and this is the last one it's kind of a downer but i find it very interesting because it tells a lot about who you are to you what is the most boring thing that you would just like you couldn't deal with like you'd like walk out through it's just so boring that you can't deal with it um Uh, well, I'm trying now. I'm trying to think. Like, did I ever leave any? Like, just walk away from conversations at all? Um, <laughs> Do people bore you? That's really the question. 
<laughs> no. Yeah, sometimes people, yeah, sometimes actually people do. Like, so I have this whole thing, like, um, I don't know, like, when I first started, I joined a bunch of cosplay groups, right? Obviously, mm-hmm. right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And I think I left, like, every single one of them. I really don't like really? being parts of and cosplay, photography groups, a lot of things, because I find that people, people that complain more about, like, and like drama more than they actually like what the whole group is about annoys yeah. me. So yeah. that's why like, I just, so I guess that would be one of the, like, I, like every single one of these cosplay groups that I, that I've got into, like I noticed there'd be people joining new every day with posting like, Hey, I'm so-and-so here's my mm-hmm. cosplay. It took me X amount of time to make this. I'm so mm-hmm. proud of it. You know, and you or like photography groups. Hey, I'm new to the group. This is my camera. I took these shots and, mm-hmm. You know, people barely say like, hey, welcome or like, oh, nice photos or nice cosplay, right? But the flipping minute, somebody's like, did you hear what somebody else did? And like, what's going on? And then everybody wants to like, it's like, where now? Now it's like, now it seems like a group full of 16,000 people, you know? It's like, that's what I don't like. I don't yeah. like being in groups of people that all, like, they really just like to complain instead of um, like, put each other on for the stuff that they're even in a group for in the first place. Like why join a group to just complain and be silent about everything? Like, yeah, that, I get on my high horse about that right now, but I'm not. <laughs> I think, but you know what I think it is? It also goes back to like your entire brand and your creativity journey. It's like, you like positivity. You don't yeah, like so negativity. I, yeah. I don't. And I've had like people, like I've unfriended people for stuff and like on Facebook a lot. Cause they're just like all they do is like it seems like everything on their wall is just like a complaint and then mm-hmm. one one person noticed that and was like oh i see you unfriended me i'm like yeah I'm like, Why? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like every single thing that you put is like a bash on something all the time i just don't want to see it anymore and well, she's like the time to be like did jonathan unfriend me? <laughs> that's just but, yeah she's like well i'm sorry my whole life isn't like rainbows and butterflies <laughs> like yours like literally said this wow and, I was, and i'm just like my life isn't like that, but like, I just, it's a choice. Yeah. Like I just don't want to see it, you know? So like, I'm really quick to just like mute and follow. This is like, if I notice that's how people are, I Mm -hmm. just, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, I mean, it's one, it's draining, but two, it's like, you know what they say? Like in the Bible, it says it's like hate begets hate. And I'm just like, you just, everybody loves the, what's the right word like the the negative nancy part of life like and then they love talking about how terrible people being negative is i don't really get it but you know it's it's yeah misery loves that's company. Like, to that day why i, I like you you really don't see me in a lot of groups of like people i'm always kind of like doing my own thing by myself because mm-hmm. I've, I've tried I've, I've like when i first came to philadelphia i literally like I, I got on Facebook, I typed in all the photographer like uh, groups and all the people like, hey, I'm new to the group. My name's Jonathan. I put pictures up with my Superman suit. Hey, if people want to like, you know, meet up and take photos, mm-hmm. I take photos. I also kind of model too. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and they're like, okay, I'm going to go out and do this. So like, oh, you know, I, and they're like, I haven't met up with about one person. So I'm like, you know, what? I just left every single one of those groups. I'm like, you guys don't. <laughs> Nobody, like, you just want to sit and judge everybody else's work and photos. Yeah. That's when people actually talk. Like, oh, you did this, or did you see how this model treated me, and I oh tried to do gosh. this with this. I'm like, you guys, do you even meet up in here, or do you just complain about people you've worked with in the past? I don't get it. So I was, I was like, I just quit all of those groups. And I, it's like, so I have to make an effort more to, you know, find more like-minded people like myself but i guess to answer your question that's one of those things it was like i'm out <laughs> yeah you're done or do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert um i would consider myself an extrovert mm-hmm. but i also like being by myself a lot so i don't know like i mm-hmm. could i guess i could do both honestly mm-hmm. like there are times when i just don't want to be around people but then also you see how like outgo like you and I have never had a conversation before, but I could still keep a conversation going, even though you are, I mean, you are asking me stuff, but, but even yeah. so like I've done, I've done podcasts too. You know, how sometimes you just, you ask a question and you're just like, yes, yes. Or no. Yeah. Or, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then you're just like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. I know you leave an open ended question. They're like, sure. I'm just like, okay. How am I supposed to make this into an hour? If you just give me one word questions, you know, <laughs> 
Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, before we end this, um, tell everybody a little bit about yourself as far as like how they can connect with you. Obviously you're on TikTok and Instagram or whatever, but what is the best way for them to consume your content? The best way would be probably Instagram is like my hub for everything. So if you want to reach me on there, um, you could find me at Jonathan Bell, B-E-L-L-E. But also just type Seattle Superman into Google and you'll find me on any of the platforms there. That's good SEO, man. Good it job. It is. And I've taken a, <laughs> take a lot of time to do that. So I appreciate you saying that. Good job. Because that is hard. That is hard. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm sure we'll talk again. As yeah. Just let me know when you have me on. I'm totally down. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, again, like I said earlier, please continue to listen to the podcast, but also follow Jonathan. You actually have a podcast as well. We got to plug that. Oh, I mean, like I said, just type my name in. <laughs> People. What's the name of the podcast? Your podcast. Uh, it's it's called the Jonathan Bell Show. So the pretty Jonathan much, Bell. okay. Yeah, that's that's. I started that as a way for people to, and also as like a like a digital journal for myself. So like, oh, cool. It, it kind of goes through my whole journey of what I'm doing now. So like every mm-hmm. other, I don't even know how many episodes it has on it, but like there i talk about like what i'm going to focus on for the week or what mm-hmm. happens and so it's pretty much like to document my whole how i'm going to s- start making money somehow same <laughs> <laughs> that's what i say to that well thank you so much jonathan for being on the show and you're um, welcome we're gonna continue watching you and i know you're gonna do great things because what i love about you and i'm gonna say is i know i keep saying stuff but what i love about you is that you're very inspiring and like people who are younger than me and people who are older than me like they not only see the hope and the positivity but they see inclusion and that to me is is what we need more of especially with what we're going through right now in our country so um thank you thank you for doing you're that. welcome yeah all right we'll talk soon okay all righty <laughs>